For many years, off-grid solar systems like the ones you see on this slide have been used to provide power at remote telecommunication sites all over the world. Off-grid solar is an excellent way to supply power at remote telecommunication sites that are too far away to connect to the electric grid without incurring exceptionally high costs. It costs roughly about 15,000 US dollars for every mile of wire to connect to the grid. And this cost can be higher if difficult terrains such as mountains, rivers, and forests are involved. Telecom sites can be run completely off of solar power, but usually a combination of fuel generators and solar are used to supply this power. Solar power is used to reduce reliance on fuel generators to reduce diesel or propane costs. Uh, to reduce fuel transportation costs, which can be very high, especially in hard to access locations. And lastly, solar helps to reduce CO2 emissions that are a byproduct of solar, uh, excuse me, of power derived from fuel generators. And the major components of a solar system are the solar modules, as you see right here, a charge controller, and batteries. Normally, in telecommunications applications, we're referring to 48-volt battery systems. Uh, other balance of system requirements might include wires, conduit, meters, and enclosures. And the diagram you're looking at here, this displays how the major components of an off-grid system are connected to power a direct current DC load. So sunlight contacts the solar modules which converts the solar into DC electrical power that it delivers to the charge controller. And the charge controller regulates the amperage and voltage that is delivered to the load. And we're showing a light here, but the load could be a repeater, transmitter, or switch in telecom applications. And then any excess power from the array is delivered to the battery system so that the batteries maintain their state of charge without getting overcharged. And then during the night when there is no sun, the energy stored in the battery is used to run the load. And some typical loads that you see here to be powered at an off-grid telecommunication site include transmitters, receivers, uh, repeaters, phone switches and other data switches and system monitoring equipment to monitor the status of the equipment. Uh, and this includes the status of the solar system's battery bank uh, and the generator if a fuel generator is uh, also being used for power. And when designing a solar system, a reliable system requires you to have, or I should say to perform a proper load analysis. Uh, this load analysis answers the question, how many amp hours a day are going to be needed for the battery bank to power the equipment on the site? Uh, this would generally be a calculation done by the engineering team or a consulting team uh, for the telecom site uh, that determines the duty cycles of the various equipment, uh, the power draws of the equipment, and then ultimately uh, convert that into amp hours per day required from the battery bank. And then having calculated the amp hours required, uh, these consultants would next need to determine how to collect enough solar to provide those amp hours. And this depends on your location, also depends on solar resources available at your longitude and latitude. Um, this is a factor of the weather that varies seasonally as well. And you need to design for the worst month of the year. So oftentimes, this is December, uh, when you're going to get the least amount of sunlight. But it could also be November, or in some cases, January, depending on where you're at. Generally, you're going to want at least five days of battery autonomy, or seven to, eight, seven to 10 days of autonomy, if you might experience longer stretches of bad weather. And then you figure out the optimal solar array tilt angle during that worst month that's going to collect the most solar power on that worst month. 
So in the U.S., the tilt angle will be about 60 to 70 degrees, typically. Uh, south of the U.S. will be less, and far north in Canada will be greater. And history and experience tells us that you should design your system so that your array is about 20% more than your load requirements. This accommodates for compromised array performance due to dust accumulation, unforeseen shading, and other circumstances. And then the second part that you see here is how much battery bank you need. Your, your battery bank is kind of like a gas tank. Um, as I said previously, generally you want to have at least five days of battery autonomy or even seven to ten days of autonomy if you might experience longer stretches of bad weather. And what I mean by battery autonomy is the number of days your batteries can power your loads if they don't receive any solar power. If you have less than five days of autonomy, your system will work well for most of the year until winter, and at that point your system will likely fail. So once we figure out the load analysis and the solar array sizing, we can then consider the charge controller. A charge controller is the brain of a PV system, and this is what Morningstar manufactures and specializes in. Uh, but in order to know which charge controller is right for you, you have to have, uh, you have, to have completed a, a load analysis and a system design. Uh, usually you want, as I said before, to have a consultant or engineering team to do this for you. Um, or you can use one of the distributors that we can refer to you. Um, the charge controller uh, maintains the battery at its highest state of charge while protecting the battery from overcharge by the array, so you can maintain and prolong your battery life. Some controllers also include load control with low voltage disconnect to prevent over discharge of battery from system loads that might be running heavy at night when there's no solar power to support the system. Um, this load control helps maximize available battery capacity and cycle life. And then lighting control is another feature offered by some controllers to turn lights off during daytime and um, turn them back on during the evening, for example. And charge controllers can also provide system status indicators with meters and LEDs to display battery voltages, uh, current system operating temperatures and alerts. And you see that some controllers can log data over weeks and months so you can have uh, historical information about the performance of your system. And you do this so eventually you can see a report that will help you, uh, that will help tell you what happened that caused your battery to discharge or what happened that caused your system to go down, for example. And lastly, you see here that uh, some controllers can even facilitate remote communications uh, with power systems. The charge controller generally represents about 10% of your total system costs. A good controller will extend battery life, and batteries can be about 40% of your first time costs and about 80% of your lifetime costs of your system. A poor controller can cause battery failure and complete failure with your entire solar system. So you can have the best batteries and best modules in the world, but they're only as reliable as your controller. Here on this chart, you see the two major types of charge controllers that Morningstar manufactures. They are pulse width modulation, or PWM, controllers. And then the second would be maximum power point tracking, or MPPT controllers. Uh, the simpler PWM controllers are usually only used on small tele telecommunication sites that are typically under 500 watts. And then for larger telecommunication sites, you need more sophistication, so you'll typically need an MPPT charge controller. And these harvest more power from the sun. They also operate at higher voltages and better accommodate long wire runs from the array to the controller. And then lastly, the MPPT controllers can, can facilitate some of the things we talked about earlier, uh, data logging and remote monitoring so you can see historical data, as well as seeing what's happening right now. 
In terms of reliability, it's important to use a controller that has a long warranty. Um, manufacturing in accordance with ISO 9001 is also important in terms of quality. Uh, controllers that are 100% solid state without any fuses, tubes, fans, or other moving parts are very important, especially at a remote telecommunication site where charge controller failure and system downtime is very costly uh, in addition to the cost of transporting a replacement controller or a replacement part to a site. Some sites experience temperatures from well below freezing to well above room temperature, so you need to check that your controller's operating temperatures are within the range of the temperatures your, your site will be experiencing. And environmental protections should include protective conformal coating of the circuit board and or epoxy encapsulation. And lightning and transient surge protection is important for nearby lightning strikes. Uh, this would be, again, nearby lightning strikes, not direct uh, strikes to the system. The telecom sites, because there's so much radiated signals, it's important that the charge controller doesn't have much radiated noise that could cause interference. So with our PWM controllers, they usually cycle at about 300 cycles per second. Uh, turning the array on and off. Uh, if this causes interference, there is an option to disconnect the jumper cable on the controller, which reduces the cycle to about one cycle per second, and this should eliminate any interference. As we mentioned previously, most telecom sites have 48-volt systems that need to be grounded using positive ground. This is different than most other industries uh, or most other industrial applications that use negative ground. But all Morningstar controllers can be used with a positive ground. Uh, they're grounded through one of the three major system components. Usually it's going to be grounded through the battery. And we have a white paper uh, that explains how to do this with our controllers. And you can see the link uh, to that white paper right here at the bottom of the slide. Remote monitoring is a, a very useful feature for telecom applications because these sites are often remote and in some cases you might need uh, even a, a helicopter to access the site. Um, if you notice an issue with your system, rather than going to the site, oftentimes you can make necessary charge controller setting changes remotely on a computer via Morningstar's free MSView software. Uh, so you can receive uh, text messages or email alerts when various voltage, temperature, or other events occur that are outside of normal operation. And you can act upon these uh, alerts accordingly. An accessory that is often helpful is a relay driver. It interfaces with our charge controller, so it has access to system information. You can use it to execute directives if certain conditions are met, such as to start up a generator if the battery is low, or to turn a vent fan on if, if it gets too hot in a building, for example. We also provide online an off-grid strain calculator that helps you to properly design the solar array to work with our charge controllers. It helps you configure the number of modules in series and parallel that can be used with each of our charge controllers depending on temperatures, module specs, and battery systems. And here you see the Morningstar solar charge controllers that are most frequently used at telecommunication sites. You can use another Morningstar controller not shown on this slide if its specifications have met your system requirements, but those shown on this slide are the ones that most telecommunication applications have. And in summary, telecom sites have been benefiting and will continue to benefit from off-grid PV power. 
Morningstar has been doing this for many years with the help of distributors and system designers. We manufacture the charge controller, which is the brain to the system. We don't uh, do the system design for you, but we can refer you to our partners who can definitely do this for you. So we thank you for listening to this presentation and please contact us at MorningstarCorp.com if you have further questions or if you need to be referred to one of our distribution partners.